Hey everybody, I'm Andy from Glide coming to you live from Toronto. Welcome to our very first Glide Next session of the year. Now today we're going to be looking at building automations in Glide with workflows. And this has been a long time coming, uh, something that I know a lot of longtime gliders have been anxiously awaiting. Uh, so following this intro, we're going to do a little workflows 101. Then we'll bring on Evan, our resident Glide solutions expert for a demo. And we'll follow that up with a quick look at how you can access workflows today. Sound good? All right. So let's look at the Glide platform. If you are new to Glide, welcome. Uh, it is a great time to be joining us. Before we get into workflows, I'd like to get you up to speed first, though, on what we're talking about when we're talking about Glide. So Glide is an all-in-one platform for business operations. Everything starts with data. You can sync to an external data source, like a spreadsheet, CRM, uh, or SQL database. You can import your data. You can connect via API. You can even start from scratch with our built-in database system, Glide Tables. And once you have your data in Glide, you can move on to your layout. You can build custom interfaces with drag and drop components. And since Glide apps run in the browser, uh, your layouts will adapt to any device. And they always look great thanks to our professionally tuned design system, which means you can customize the look and feel of your apps to keep them on brand. But you don't need to worry about all those tiny little details like line height or element spacing. Glide will handle all of that for you. Now, the cherry on top is this third piece, workflows. Uh, in the past, Glide uh, automation in Glide required either a third-party tool to do or user interaction. So you would need someone actually using the physical app to manually trigger an automation. Now, with the workflows, this is no longer the case. Uh, automation is now native in Glide, and you don't need a third-party tool to make it happen, and you don't need someone pressing a button in the app to trigger those workflows. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Now, you might be asking, uh, who uses Glide? Well, we've got hundreds of thousands of teams who have built with Glide, and they're primarily operations teams. And we have some pretty dominant industries like retail, manufacturing, real estate, and logistics. And the one thing that all these teams have in common is that they are building solutions in Glide without code. And now, thanks to workflows, they can take those solutions to the next level. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So let's take a look. I mentioned in the chat, uh, shout out to Jack and our team for that awesome trailer. I can't think of a better way of capturing the essence of what workflows bring to Glide. So let's talk a little bit about what this looks like when you actually get into the builder. I like to think of this as the anatomy of a workflow. Now for long time gliders, uh, you'll notice up top that the actions editor up here is now the uh, workflows editor, but it behaves in pretty much the same way. Your existing workflows are lifted, listed on the left panel and your configuration options will appear on the right, and your workflow is in the middle. Now, you're going to see this in action uh, in a moment when uh, Evan hops on for his demo. Now, let's talk about the triggers. So every workflow starts with a trigger, and you have a few to choose from. Uh, first one is the schedule trigger. This runs at designated times uh, up to as much as uh, every five minutes. And it's really useful for automating routine tasks, like sending reports or, let's say, uh, running calculations in a table uh, repeatedly. It relies on loops connected to a data source. And we'll talk more about that in a second. 
Next is the email trigger. Every email trigger comes with a unique email address. And when an email is received at that address, it's going to trigger that workflow. The workflow can then parse that inbound email. And that means you can pull things out like the headers and body and attachments and do things based on that data. So for example, you could have a Glide app that triages routes and even uh, responds to email inquiries because it's grabbing that information out of the email, storing it, and then you can do things with it. Now the next trigger is my personal favorite. Uh, it's the webhook trigger. And I love this one because webhooks are amazing. They, they let platforms speak to each other and they're a pretty open standard. It's a little bit more technical, but the potential is huge. Uh, the webhook trigger lets you run actions based on an external post request. And that means that other tools can then pass signals and data into your Glide app. So for example, let's say you have a Glide app for your sales team, your sales reps to use in the field. Maybe it's some kind of sales assistant app that runs on their phone and they keep it in their pocket. If you assign a lead to them in your CRM, so let's say in Salesforce or HubSpot, that could trigger a workflow in the route via webhook because all of these other platforms interact well with webhooks and they have support for webhooks. Now, the last trigger we're gonna talk about here is the app interaction trigger. This is uh, very familiar or should be very familiar to longtime gliders on the call uh, because app interactions used to be called custom actions. Now, these ones are uh, initiated by a user taking a manual action in the app. Uh, so uh, for example, it might be by submitting a form or pressing a button. So those are the different triggers at your disposal. The next piece are the steps. And these are the things that are going to actually happen in your workflow. So the first piece of that is actions. Uh, these are, are going to make up the bulk of your workflow steps. They're used to perform a function, like adding a row to a table. They can also perform computation actions, like running a calculation. They can include integration actions, like sending a Slack message, for example. We have a bunch of different integrations, and there are a lot of actions tied to those integrations. And it also includes AI actions, like generate text. Now, the next piece in the workflow steps are the loops. And these are a core part of your workflow's logic and they're actually required for, for scheduled workflows, as, as I mentioned before. Uh, you connect a loop to a data source in your app, and then for every record in that data source, the loop's nested actions will apply to that record. So for example, you could iterate loop through a bunch of rows in a table and update a column value. Uh, you can also nest loops and conditions within loops to build more complex logic systems. And we're gonna have a little peek at that with uh, Evan's demo. And finally, conditions. So conditions, these are another vital part of a workflow's logic. Uh, they let you add if then else branches to a workflow. So if we go back to that example of an email trigger where you are getting just general inquiries to an email inbox, you could have AI categorize the email based on the content of the message and then take different actions based on the assigned category. And then as with loops where you can nest things within it, you can nest loops within conditions. So by combining these things together, you can get a pretty complex, sophisticated, advanced workflow going by mixing and matching the different steps and the different parts. Now, it's one thing for me to talk about all of this in abstract. We have all the different parts here. I think what folks are really interested in, though, is seeing this in action. So Evan, welcome. Thank you for, for hopping in. Hello, everyone. As Andy said, I'm Evan, and I am a solutions expert here at Glide. And I'll be taking you through a not just any demo today, but actually a fully simulated business that is running on Glide using Glide workflows. And we'll be taking a look at how this business receives orders, and this business being Glide Line Logistics is our demo business. So we're going to be taking a look at a little app ecosystem that is an order management system that consists of two different apps. One is a warehouse queue, which takes, which is what warehouse pickers would be using out in the warehouse to easily see the part that they're, they need to get, where that's at in the low warehouse, and then easily being able to scan that uh, with their mobile device. 
Then the other side of this is going to be the operations platform, which is the brain of Glideline Logistics, which handles all of the orders coming in, automatically assigns them to the most available picker, the one that has the least amount of orders in their queue, and allows the operations team to easily manage this from a dashboard and monitor the warehouse pickers and the order management. So these orders, they come from a couple of different sources. Orders can come from in-store where customers place an order with an employee and those orders are automatically added to the database. They can also come in via the website uh, where customers can order from a portal and we're going to be receiving these via our webhook trigger. And then customers also notoriously will email sales reps with parts and quantity numbers and have their order magically appear in the system. So we're going to be taking a look at all three different types of these orders. So let's go ahead and hop in to the operations platform. And while the layout tab of this is beautiful and allows the ops team to monitor this, the workflows tab is actually where a lot of the magic is happening. So we're going to start with the website order receiver. And what happens with this is when the website has an order, they send over structured data called JSON in a webhook. So we're catching that with our webhook trigger and then extracting from that data, the customer, all the order items, and then placing an order inside of our orders database. And then we're going to create a loop that goes over how many items are in that order. And then using that new loop feature in workflows, we're going to loop through every single item in that order and get the part number, the quantity of, of that part, the price of that, and we're going to add them as line items to the order. And then this is my favorite part of this is that from one workflow, we're going to then call another workflow, our order assigner, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. And the order will automatically get assigned at the end of this workflow. Now that's websites where things are structured. Let's take a look at emails. The email trigger is amazing because you can add this email address to a distribution group or distribution list within like Google Workspace or Microsoft Exchange. And you can add that to like your sales distribution list. And then anytime that distribution list is emailed, this trigger will run. And with our conditions, we can check against a list of all of our customers and verify whether or not the email is from a customer or whether the email is not from a customer. And if it's not from a customer, we're just going to log that for our operations team to take a look at. But then using Glide AI text to JSON, we can take something as unstructured and random as an email from a customer and structure that in a way that's consistent and can be read by Glide. So we then can after that's structured, go through and extract the email, all of the order items that were mentioned. And we're even asking Glide AI to log whether or not they successfully pulled out the order, the full order in, in that email. And now, once again, using another set of conditions, we can check, did Glide AI say that, yes, we did extract that order successfully, or did we flag it? And if we did flag it, since we did find the customer, let's go ahead and place that order, but alert our ops team, which is what we're seeing over here. Hey, we analyzed this email, but we didn't find any parts in it uh, with this structure. Now, if the order was extracted, let's go ahead and find the customer and place that order and then go through that same order process that we were looking at uh, with the website order receiver, where we take the number of items that we found in the order and loop through, get the part numbers, get the prices of all those items uh, from our parts database and 
decide how much that cost and add those line items to the order. And once again, we will then be calling our order assigner workflow. Or you could maybe even call it an agent, <laughs> an order assigner agent. Now, let's go ahead and look at our order assigner. So order assigner was a webhook trigger because we're using call API to alert our order assigner that something's going on and we have a new order. So first we're going to go ahead and get that order. And then we're going to loop through all of our available warehouse uh, pickers and who is on shift. And we're going to set how many uh, orders they're currently working on within this loop. Then we're going to go into another loop to do some math and get what shift we're on, get the pickers that are on that shift and how many orders that we just set above um, each picker has. And then using Glide AI's text to choice, we're going to select a warehouse picker based on the least amount of order items in their queue so that the balance of orders uh, stays consistent throughout all the pickers. And then we're going to assign that, but then we also need to tell the picker what items are part of that order. So we're going to loop through all the items that are part of that order and assign them to the picker as well. Now, that's email and website orders, but I also mentioned in-store orders. Since in-store orders are automatically added to the database, we can instead use our scheduled trigger, looking at every 15 minutes to go through our list of orders and find orders where the source of the order is in store and the status is new. And then go through this same order assigning process for our in-store orders. Now, the scheduled workflows can work in a time-based increment, like every 15 minutes, every five minutes, every hour, but they can also work at a certain time of day to run reports. So every night right now, right before midnight, we gather all of the current day stats and add them to our stat log. This is a really common business practice to have reports ready for, for your workers by the next morning so that they can be used to run the business the next day. And now it's available within Glide AI. And it's really beautiful how workflows brings the entire thing full circle. We have analytics and we have order management, and we have order assignment. And you can see how this can apply to many different processes like IT help desks and feedback forms and project management and customer management, all these different areas we can work in. So Andy, how do we get access to workflows? All right. I'm glad you asked that. Do you want to bring up <laughs> that final slide there? Yes, sir. <laughs> Great question. So, <laughs> so who has access to workflows today? If you are on a free plan, you can use the app interaction trigger, the custom actions. You'll see the workflows editor in the builder. If you are on a maker or business plan, you will have the schedule, email, and webhook triggers available to you now. If you are on a legacy plan, you will need to upgrade to the latest maker or business plan. Now, the enterprise plan is a little bit different because every enterprise plan is custom to the customer. So talk to your account manager or get in touch with our sales team, sales at heyglide.com, and they'll be able to take care of you. And for learning anything else about workflows, the best place to start, glideapps.com slash workflows. All the information you need is there. And with that, let's get into some of the questions. All right. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Lots of questions and lots of ideas for how to improve workflows and, and do things with workflows. So I think uh, we'll leave it here. Thanks everyone for joining us for our first Glide Next of the year. Workflows are just getting started. This is just the beginning. We're going to be talking about workflows and automation and AI so much more over the coming weeks and months. Everything's going to build on this foundation that we are laying this week. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you in the community and see you at the next event. Have a great one. Bye for now.